a very big good morning to all of y'all. Uh, as we can see that today's uh, topic is impact of COVID-19 on commerce. And uh, we find that uh, things have not been what they traditionally have been. And uh, a lot of changes are seen in uh, the current scenario in the last four to five months. And in fact, if we look at the global scenario, then uh, when it began from China, it has been there from uh, November. And so we are uh, more than six months uh, past in this uh, global scenario and pandemic. Now, trade and commerce. I'm going to be briefing about on basics of uh, the trade and the commerce, how it is affected, which sector is affected, and uh, how uh, we can enlighten ourselves for a better uh, understanding. Now, looking at trade and commerce, you know, we find that it is divided into broad sectors, which says uh, imports, exports, uh, there's domestic trade, and domestic trade is further divided into manufacturing, wholesale, distribution, retail, and service industries. And this is uh, all interconnected and interdependent. And for example, the imports are uh, uh, more important to a lot of manufacturing industries where a lot of raw materials have been coming from China, let it be chemical industries, pharma industries. Then uh, when we talk about the exports, then our traditional markets that have been USA and Europe, we find that they were one of the first few to get affected and still uh, majorly affected, causing uh, a lot of damage to India's exports. Then we have the domestic trade. Manufacturing went for a complete shutdown uh, for the first two months of the lockdown. Then slowly we went into the unlock mode, which later started the wholesale and the distribution. Retail is still not started in most of the country and the service industries, which are part of the essentials have been uh, going through it, but uh, it's not really been a, a hunky dory road, especially for the IT industry, which is majorly still happening from home. And we find that the IT industry, uh, when you say the Indian IT industry globally has been dominated by the Indian companies. This is one of the major sectors that has been affected. Uh, we find uh, the certain sectors, you know, let us understand what are the sectors that are affected, which are not affected, uh, which have had a positive outcome and which have had a negative outcome. Now, uh, if we look at history, you know, we find that in every natural or unnatural calamities, there are always potential losers and there are always potential winners. Uh, these can be set sector wise this can be country wise and we find that uh, this has been repeated throughout history since the beginning of time in this scenario of covid-19 there are some sectors which are majorly hit and there are some sectors which have seen the biggest boom since uh, decades or even centuries for that matter if you say now we'll start with the negative aspect which has been the most affected and we'll move on to the ones that are uh, positively affected Looking at uh, tourism and leisure, now this is one sector where uh, everybody would uh, think that God knows when it is going to actually rebound. Uh, what has happened was that normal tourism and leisure uh, travel and expenditure has been completely put on hold by most of the citizens. Even in countries where there has been revival, there are some countries which have declared that there is not going to be a single more case case and we are COVID free, but we f still find that the visas have not opened up, that flights have not opened up, international travel has not opened up, and there is no clarity on when it is going to be done. Related sectors, when you say the hotel industry, the travel industry, uh, the transportation industry is equally hit. So as a whole, if you look at tourism and leisure, this is one of the worst affected. Even when it opens up, uh, we will find that uh, the hotels, uh, for example, might have a sector where people will say that, oh, we don't know what has been happening in this hotel. It's been closed since about six months, eight months, 10 months. Whether it is clean, it's not clean. Some hotels have been converted to COVID centers. So there is a lot of uncertainty for this sector, even in the newer, near future and in the medium future. The second most affected is the aviation and maritime. 
now we feel that you know as trade has never been stopped maritime uh, industry was never stopped and cargo was always operating cargo aircrafts were operating but aviation and maritime industry is one of the largest hit industries even today what has happened is uh, the aviation sector for example we all know travel is completely shut down it's being governed by uh, the respective countries we are having the vande bharat missions where uh, air india is being put into use and the other airlines are given per flight permissions and it has ensured that there is a in indirect lockdown in the aviation industry globally some airlines that have opened up uh, travel to a lot of countries there are others that have completely shut down operations and it is an uncertain future there are a lot of aviation uh, companies that have had to return their leases cancel their leases uh, close operations at airports especially the low cost carriers uh, we have easyjet ryanair and all these uh, international uh, airlines which have been offering at uh, flights at 1 dollar 1 pound 1 euro 10 dollars 10 pounds 10 euros we will not see that happening anywhere soon this is the airlines that had given a big push to the tourism uh, industry also now tourism being hit aviation for general travel was always hit we also additionally find that when it comes to uh, trade and commerce also the reduction in the number of services of cargo aircrafts that is the cost of operations the cost of the safety features that have been had to implement it is being passed on to the end consumer so we find that uh, safety precautions the equipments that had to be added uh, the screenings of uh, all the cargo that is happening that all involves a lot of cost so we find that these are the items that have been uh, majorly hit and the cost has been passed on to the consumer this has resulted in the increase in the cost of living for example a ship that is getting uh, your uh, products from example china to india which is being on a declining trend and it is shifting to countries like taiwan malaysia vietnam which do not have enough services in these places for example if we are are having 100 vessels coming from china to india in the past we are having maybe 10 today but there is a gap of 90 vessels that have been coming and bringing in products a there is a shortage of those products b even if you are having alternate markets let's say vietnam vietnam ports are not equipped to handle this kind of cargo and they will take time to cope with all these heavy cargoes let it be malaysia let it be taiwan any of these countries so the focus is also always now going to be on high value products even for the cargo companies they will ensure that uh, they get more value and they have to give less space so that they can accommodate more cargo on the same vessel or same flight so this is cost uh, increased a lot of costs in the maritime industry again we find that uh, this has been happening uh, the uh, uh, employees that have been employed in these uh, things the cost has gone up substantially for example it used to be very easy for somebody joining a ship to take a flight from one destination to the other join his vessel there continue on his journey now with the airlines shut the people working in the maritime industry are not able to go there so these companies are chartering aircrafts taking them from one place to other the other to the third and then keeping them in quarantine for 15 days 20 days as the rules might be in those destination cities and countries and then moving them on to the vessels and similarly when the uh, 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 employee gets off a vessel after doing his time the similar proceed so all these costs are being borne by the maritime sector also this has caused a major dent in the top lines and the bottom lines of these kind of companies so these are the two sectors which we find are the most hit and will take a longer time to recover then we have the automotive sector this is uh, another sector which has been hit but it is not in doldrums for example they have always had the um, in the last uh, one or one and a half year the productions have been coming down the stocks have been rising so they have been already planning for uh, planned shutdowns and uh, they have been able to implement it to a certain extent 
but yes new automotives have not been uh, bought as they would have been bought in normal circumstances sales are down to maybe 10% people who really needed to buy vehicles and uh, have been uh, used to get changing their vehicles or the hni clients they have been buying which is not even 1% of their total portfolio in automotive sector we again find that over a period of time say maybe 6 uh, to 6 months to 12 months we will find that this is one sector which will boom also not automotive vehicles per se but even the ancillary units what will happen is in the last 6 months or so when your vehicles have been standing there will be lot of degradation of the part the metal and the vehicles and the moment you get to your normal working in about uh, two or three more uh, months time or even the sectors that have opened up now we will find that these vehicles which have been idling we have not been used will require a lot of part replacements so when this actually trans to your sales and your replacements and you will need your vehicles this is one sector which will come back at least for the ancillaries very soon and people will ensure that they uh, have their vehicles up to date we have heavy rains we have got floods in some areas we have got drought in some areas so the vehicles are being subject to extreme uh, conditions we will find that over a period of time this will be one of the recovering sectors but currently yes it is one of the affected sectors productions are down uh, distributions are low people are not buying vehicles unless and until really necessary and it is uh, going to be so for the next few months or so we have uh, another sector that has been uh, one uh, the, one of the major highlights in recent times we've been reading in the newspapers also which is the construction and the real estate this has been subject to lot of stresses in the recent past especially after implementation of rera after the rera laws came into play this sector has been hit because it took time for them to comply with all the rules regulations ensure that timely completion of projects happen and it has been happening uh, and they have been suffering in a while for getting compliant on top of that the moment covid hits we find that the first thing people do is stop buying houses stop uh, construction activities in fact later on uh, the government uh, even during lockdown allowed for emergency construction where uh, for rains and for protection and all these things but full fledged construction and real estate activities are still in a shutdown mode added to this was the issue of the migrant labor now we find that the construction industry is one of the largest employers of migrant labor this has been so uh, since the inception of the sector and we find that uh, this was the largest displaced population in recent times which have moved from uh, the north to the south east to the west and complete dislocation of employable manpower which has been trained in this sector so we find that this is one sector which will take a substantially longer time to recover but not as bad as tourism and leisure we find that over a period of time uh, people will come back to work especially those who have gone back to the villages they will find that there are not so many opportunities although the government is doing a lot to develop local opportunities we will still find these people coming back the moment uh, trains and buses and normal transport normalizes but it is a long shot and the construction sector is already running short of funds it's already running uh, on infused steam so this is one sector that is going to have a major impact and it is one of the largest losers when it comes to effect of covid 19 then we have the manufacturing of the non essentials manufacturing as we know for the essentials have never been stopped they have always been running maybe for a few days it was shut down initially but that was one sector that was kept forcefully running by the government there have been issues where uh, even the essential manufacturing uh, has faced a lot of problems when it comes to labor availability availability of parts repairs standard maintenances and uh, we found uh, cases when uh, uh, the companies have started after a shutdown procedures were not followed employees doing one work were told to do the other they were not proficient in that and there was skill mismatch and this caused some major uh, issues when it comes to manufacturing industry in the non essential segment this is one sector which uh, was the most subdued in recent times uh, let it be garments footwear 
uh, other kinds of uh, non essential items like furniture these kind of manufacturing have taken a back seat in fact all those uh, uh, factories that were doing this kind of uh, manufacturing have either tried to shift their productions or uh, to essential products or they have tried to diversify or they have tried uh, close down their operations uh, due to issues that were beyond their control and this is a sector which has been hit uh, quite a bit now manufacturing sector especially the msmes we find in india that are the largest employers this has been uh, with the migrant population displacing this is also uh, one of the reasons where manufacturing for non essentials uh, suffered a setback people are now buying only uh, the items that are re requiring immediate displacement with weddings not happening with functions not happening people are not going out not meeting people garments and footwear jewelry they have all taken a back seat and uh, there is no question of uh, when it is going to be revived so it's one sector which uh, people are looking at uh, for a uh, boosted revival the government has given lot of packages uh, to boost this manufacturing sector and the msme sector but uh, it's very doubtful as to what the actual outcome would be for companies that are running uh, they will not have so much of a problem but companies that have had to shut down or pause productions is going to be an uphill task uh, to revive this manufacturing then we have the financial services which i would say are uh, moderately affected but uh, not so much uh, for example the loan sector the companies that are doing the kyc the companies that have been doing uh, lending borrowing refinancing with manufacturing on a hold with uh, trading on a hold and uh, literally one quarter going uh, out of the books uh, of most of the companies this is a sector which uh, was people dependent and has been affected but uh, the advantage that the financial services sector has was they could work from home they were doing follow ups they were do ensuring that people whenever the manufacturing starts or the trading operation start they are there for people and they ensured that they utilized that all these services can be put forward uh, to their clients and ensure that they have kept a connect so this is one sector that is affected but only moderately and over a period of time will be one of the fastest to recover because as soon as manufacturing construction real estate all these start back you will require the loans you will require the funding you will require the services of these intermediaries uh, to help you finance all these goals and this is one sector that will rebound pretty soon although it is dependent on the previous sectors that we have talked about then we have the education system a lot has been said about uh, education system during the pandemic we have the new uh, uh, new policy out uh, just yesterday we find that the government has drastically changed the system for the better of course and uh, it is going to be a difficult task but it has not stopped the education system did not stop in fact uh, a lot of uh, changes did happen but change is the new constant as they say so we have gone from the mode of physical education to online education initially there were lot of kinks people were not used to online education people were concerned about strains in the eyes of people people were concerned on the size of the screens the screen time that uh, children and students might be having but over a period of time we find that one to two hours a day all this has been uh, uh, dispensed with if i may say so and it has been so that a lot of studies have been conducted very recently to study the effect of screen screen time it so happened that children were getting a lot of screen time anyways that is one issue and uh, this is uh, been uh, utilized and the devices what it was 20 years back when these uh, studies were conducted where they used to say that it could strain on the eye today's laptops mobiles devices have got reading modes uh, they reduce glare so they are not that harmful what it used to be decades ago so these new studies are being conducted there are people are uh, displaying the results of these studies so education although initially very affected but it is one of the first few to bounce back uh, the fees is uh, being collected by the institutions the students are getting their education in fact a uh, lot of institutions are doing mock examinations uh, st students have uh, got much more resources today there are a lot of innovations happening in the education sector 
for example we find that the education has given boost to ai where uh, the teacher is uh, uh, talking about a subject and you have an ai bot or an ai uh, software that is giving a uh, simultaneously there was a whatsapp uh, uh, video a few days ago where in a school in kerala there was a teaching drawing on the drawing board about talking about elephants and on the one side of the screen you have a large elephant come up and the teacher describes the parts for the children and they can actually visualize the things so this is much better than a normal classroom but yes the size of the screen is an issue but your visual visualization for the students is much better on top of that uh, the moment you get access to these devices the students start asking their parents their teachers much more information because the screens are much more descriptive rather than what the teacher had been writing for example even in the presentations a lot of graphics are being included by the teachers which are being shown to the students where they are giving their presentations online so as against to the normal notes that teachers have been writing they have been uh, talking more describing more so this is opening up the imagination of the students so this is one sector that is uh, returning to normal one of the fastest although uh, i'm sure that schools and colleges are not going to open up very soon in the physical form and even after they open we really don't know how it is going to be affected and whether students are going to come to school parents will be sending them to school or not but this is one of the uh, sectors that is bouncing back very very fast then we have the sector for oil and gas now oil and gas sector is one of the uh, neutral sectors i would say when it comes to most of the pandemic unless and until it has been a major catastrophe related to the oil producing countries but still production goes on the uh, employability stays stag uh, stagnant literally and the growth only comes when the countries that are producing these oil and gas are on a developing uh, goal uh, we found that you know oil uh, prices had literally crashed they are back to previous figures there's been lot of fluctuation but the industry never stopped during the pandemic it has been uh, operating as normal the factors that has affected it were uh, not related to covid it was more related to the geopolitical situation but oil and gas has been stagnant and one of the most neutral sectors in this pandemic throughout when it comes to indian companies or when you say uh, the global companies also for example shell bharat petroleum uh, and all these companies they have been pretty much neutral and they have focusing more on r and d although the staff has also been working from home uh, on the, when it when it is the essential sector uh, for safety wise but as a sector it has not been affected at all due to covid 19 now we have the set of potential winners the things and the sectors that have seen an increase a boom a growth story where people least expected it we have always known that you know uh, agriculture is one of the sectors that was neutral in fact uh, we find that during this covid the farmers have got better value for their products uh, they were able to go directly to the consumers with the middlemen and the chains shutting down we found the uh, 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 farmers going with the trucks and the tempos and the distributors directly to the consumer resulting in better returns from what they used to get in the past so this is one sector that has been uh, on the growth trajectory uh, agriculture also received an impetus when uh, your uh, migrant labor went back to the villages uh, they went back to the fields as uh, the the sowing season was on uh, the fields were fully operating so all these educated people went back to the fields went back to the farms started farming started tilling their lands which have been lying idle so we found that the agricultural growth story started this is where we also get the news in the current year that uh, the sowing has more than tripled as compared to previous years this is solely for the reason that instead of one person working in the fields we had 10 people so it was a much faster turn around for the sowing much more land was uh, sown for uh, the crops and it gave a big boost to this sector we have the e-commerce sector e-commerce as we all know initially it was shut down then it opened up for essentials and uh, then it was fully opened up and this is one of the booming sectors where people being scared to go out they prefer home deliveries 
things reaching to their doorsteps essentially uh, for the essential items that we had for food products in the first few weeks of the pandemic we find that uh, their growth story has been exponential in fact they have to increase their employability they had to increase their delivery people they had to increase their infrastructure and they reap those benefits so this is uh, one sector which really boomeranged and uh, grew one of the fastest we find uh, the valuations of these kind of companies during the covid have gone up exponentially and when you check international ones or the domestic ones and uh, more and more msme have listed on these e-commerce portals to sell their products so their listings have also gone up their utilization has gone up with more customers more suppliers the consumer is getting a better option uh, to buy and it has gone up phenomenally the next sector that uh, we would like to talk about is the ict sector the information and communication technology this has been on the india's growth trajectory since a while now but what changed what what did covid-19 do to this sector that had to be highlighted and why is it in a potential winner and why is it growing first of all with jio coming in and giving unlimited data at uh, much better speeds that have been doing it gave a market penetration to all the companies to all the sectors and to all the individuals for data to reach the end person we all have apps on our phones today on the smartphones which are uh, watching content let it be news let it be television let it be online content let it be shopping and the works so we find that this is one of the most important sector that has been growing and we find that in addition to the growth we find lot of infrastructure has been built up the towers the bandwidth i mean we know of a lot of stories where institutions were very scared to go for a higher bandwidth utilization uh, let it be companies corporates uh, schools and institutions a lot of deliberations were done on whether to increase bandwidth increase the speeds not really needed so a lot of spending has been done on infrastructure for ict for all these institutes and institutions and corporates this has given a big boost to manufacturing of it products and working from home ensured that in the first one week most of the laptops mouse and all these devices and peripherals went into shortage this result in huge production uh, improves uh, they went on to uh, multiple shifts the productions were increasing the sales were increasing so this is one sector that grew uh, throughout the uh, pandemic and even today Uh, we have we know uh, recently they extended the work from home for it companies and ict companies till december so people who were thinking that okay you know we will just temporarily take for one or two months and then we will return they are now even buying these kind of products so this will have a further impetus to the ict industry let it be on the front end or back end software or hardware we will find that it increased quite a bit what other sectors do we find are the most beneficial and have been on the top of the curve when it comes to growth trajectories the biggest and the most important is medical supply and services your health services your personal care and health care products your cleanliness products food processing food packaging retail now these are the sectors that have been on the booming part on the exponential growth trajectory and it is seen that these will be remaining so for a long time to come at least not only when this pandemic gets over but even after that your lifestyle would change it has already changed and you will find that the medical supplies you would get used to washing your hands let it be with soap sanitizer uh, any of these products your food you will start cleaning your food you will start uh, washing your hands you will start washing your Uh, products that you are buying from outside so you will ensure that you buy them with proper packaging so that there is no perforage people will increase their packaging uh, cost their packaging quality they will ensure that products are not touched by hand personal and healthcare supplies automatically like ppe kits your uh, hand wash sanitizers their productions are going up phenomenally your, their usage is going up phenomenally and uh, medicines medicines is one of the sector that has always been 
on the back burner but growing but this came to the fore and highlight there is a run for vaccine with a me first globally let it be every country they give a date there's another country or company that comes and says okay five days before we are going to it five days before we are going to do it six months down the line you will find that the medical companies medical supplies pharma companies would have increased their valuation hundredfold just by announcing that they are going for a vaccine the share value jumps phenomenally imagine what will happen when the actual vaccines will come and these companies will start reaping those benefits so this is when we will find that uh, uh, you will have the maximum benefit Moving on to the next topic where we will go sector wise and trade impact on what is happening and we will find that uh, we will analyze sector wise first when it comes to domestic trade. What is the impact that have been uh, on the domestic trade within the country and how is that uh, going to affect our daily lives. So when you come to the domestic trade impact uh, we will first look at the industries uh, that have been affected. And uh, the inputs that these uh, sectors are giving to the other industries, like one dependent on the other. And this is uh, where I'm not sure whether you can see the graphic clearly, but it is from the Ministry of Statistics. And uh, they have clearly uh, analyzed and uh, seen how the imports have affected India's production during this pandemic. Now, which is affected most? We find that the electrical machinery. Uh, uh, this is the, the figure is showing the percentage of India's total imports. Now, 10% of India's total imports is electrical machinery. 9% is machinery and mechanical appliances. So that makes it nearly 19% of just machinery uh, of total India's imports. So that means this production is happening within the country, but we are importing such huge amount of machinery for domestic production that it is going to be affected most of it has been chi coming from china then we had taiwan we had germany for high precision we have had japan and then the next when we come is chemicals chemicals include include organic chemicals in organic chemicals plastic raw materials so these are basically the inputs that are going into industries which find uh, that uh, we find uh, about 30 percent of india's imports is machinery and raw materials that means that we are utilizing it for production within the country for production and distribution into domestic trade now which are the sectors that will be affected because of the effects on imports from these countries we find the construction and communication industry relies heavily on electrical machinery especially the electronics and uh, the appliances that we've been using and uh, like uh, the transport department the machineries department they have been utilizing for uh, electrical machinery uh, your high precision electronic components your pcbs your assembly lines so these are the industries that are going to be affected with the shortage of electrical machinery imports and with china out of the picture and bringing more and more of taiwan vietnam uh, thailand diversification would take time and it is going to be seen that it brings in a lot of diversification in this sector and the sectors are going to be affected in the near term. Moving on, we have the uh, mechanical machinery and appliances uh, which have been affected. The petroleum products, uh, the transport industry, wood processing industry, construction industry. And we find that uh, this is also another nearly the same amount of what has been affected uh, because of electrical machinery. So we have heavy machinery and heavy appliances which are utilized in, in the industry like forging for making metal parts for automotives, etc. And these are the sectors that are going to be affected because of uh, mismatch in imports, because of restrictions on imports, because of uh, the pandemic staff uh, not attending to their work, working from home, uh, the transport sector is being affected. Uh, so this is the sectors that are majorly going to be affected. Moving on, we have the organic chemicals and plastics. Uh, rubber, plastics, textiles, pharmaceuticals, chemical products. All these industries, when you put together, it's a substantial and sizable production base for the India. Uh, when you say the Indian industry, 
if you utilize this 30%, you are maybe getting 80% of your production depending on this 30%. So if these industries are at stake, uh, then your entire economic system is under stress, which results in the follow on on the labor, follow on on your production, follow on on the cycle of uh, your finance. And this affects India in a very, very adverse manner. Now we are looking at the global trade impact. Now we, uh, we can find this information. Uh, you can see it's uh, available uh, easily online. This is from the United Nations, UNCTAD. They have given certain estimates. Uh, just about uh, uh, three months ago, I believe this data is from uh, February. And this has only increased in the last three months. So which are the most affected economies due to COVID-19 pandemic? After China, the first thing that hit globally uh, because of COVID was the European Union, especially Italy and Spain, which have got sizable populations. Incidentally, the European Union is also one of the largest trading partners of India. So it directly affected India when it comes to export of Indian products to the European Union. It also affected our manufacturing capabilities because a lot of precision and high precision products were coming into India from uh, France, Germany and Italy. We find very recently that even the Rafale uh, aircrafts that have come here are from the European Union. This was supposed to be delivered in May, but due to the pandemic, the deliveries got delayed. And this is some of the high ticket ones. The normal ones have been affected quite a bit. So European Union as a block of 29 countries is one of the biggest affected economy when you say as a block of countries globally. United Nations, uh, the figure here is a little outdated. Right now, it is nearly at par with uh, the European Union. And uh, we find that it has been majorly affected. The businesses are in shutdown mode. Uh, people have started moving out, out of frustration. The economies are under a lot of stress. But we find that it is also one of the largest affected economy that has been resulting. Uh, Japan and Korea were the near country to China when the pandemic started. Surprisingly, it did not affect these economies too much in terms of the spread of the virus. But when you say the global trade impact, these two countries have been supplying some of the high uh, appliances that have been seen all over the world. And we find that this has not been able to get productions. For example, Samsung had to shut down production in Korea, in Japan, Sony Corporation was affected. And these are the companies like LG, Sony, Samsung, uh, Hyundai, and many such uh, companies that have been uh, having a global presence. And these countries have been affected. Uh, then we have Singapore and UK, uh, Mexico, Switzerland, Malaysia. Uh, well, Malaysia and Thailand are trying very hard to come back online, but it's not an easy task. I mean, Malaysia has opened up, Switzerland has opened up but uh, people are still not reporting to work and it's a major uh, uphill task for these countries to try and get back to normal. We find India is not so much affected as much as other countries so far, but the results within the country are not so encouraging. Uh, our economies, uh, when you say the tax collections are uh, at a low as compared to the same time last year. And we find that this has been going up, uh, but very slightly. But these recoveries within India are majorly because of your uh, essential item company, the large companies that have been working throughout the pandemic, the food and the pharma companies that have been supplying to the world. And this recovery is based on that. But the MSME companies are majorly hit, the jobs are majorly hit uh, in all of these countries. And it's going to be a time uh, frame for these economies to rebound. Now, what is the immediate impact on India? There's lockdown, another lockdown, two more lockdowns. Then we start the unlo unlocking, then one unlocking, two unlocking, and we recently had the third unlocking yesterday. Now, what has it resulted? 75% of India's workforce is self-employed or casual workers. 75%. You can imagine that what has been happening to this sector, the self-employed have been mostly sitting at home, working from home, trying to ensure that their employees are taken care of. Their customers have been uh, given their deliveries on time. 
the work completely came to a standstill the moment the lockdown hit and it has been a major task for all these 75% of workforce either employees or employers to sustain themselves in this last four or five months then we have had so many layoffs and initially it was curtailed for about a month or so but when you say airlines hotels uh, there's salary cuts there's layoffs msme companies have laid off substantial population uh, uh, portion of their uh, employees and this has had a major impact uh, these unemployed people are trying to become entrepreneurs which is a good part but it is a complete route of msme companies uh, that have been working throughout the pandemic. We've also found that, uh, you know, the MSME have been affected earlier by the note ban, then GST, where most of the MSME companies had to either shut down or uh, rejuvenate themselves or to reinvent themselves. It has been seen that they are one of the major affected companies. And we find that with COVID-19 hitting, a lot of them have shut down. There have been government stimuluses to ensure that these companies come out of these problems, but it has not reached the right companies. Only companies that have been surviving, that have been growing, were given these kind of funds. But these are not the companies that need the funds. The companies that really need the funds are the ones that are in problem. So if you're not addressing the problem, and assisting people that are part of the solution, it's not going to have a solution. It is going to create a bigger problems. Uh, the credit crisis, NPAs are, are going to phenomenally rise the moment lockdown is completely lifted. Uh, the economy completely opens up maybe in a month or two. The moratoriums go currently because of the moratorium. All you are uh, told is, okay, you know, you can pay later on. The interest is later on. But let's assume what will happen in January 2021. The uh, moratoriums are gone. In January, you're supposed to pay your installments. You have not paid for maybe a year or so. And suddenly you have to start paying. Your uh, things are coming back to track. So you manage to pay in January. You don't pay in February. You pay in March. You don't pay. In. So by the end of the uh, last quarter of the current financial year, you will find that the NPAs will rise phenomenally. There's a huge stress that is going to be faced by the banking sector, and there's going to be shortage of capital, there's going to be shortage of rollover of money, and we will find that this will become a viral impact, and uh, uh, there will be very difficult solutions to this kind of a scenario. Now, what is the financial impact? We, are, we just saw about what kind of various impacts that are uh, being affected in this. Now, this figure is giving about uh, the figure that has been uh, affected uh, on the trade wise and how many lakh crore was the exposure to the COVID-19 hit sectors for the current banking system. So now the financial impact on the trade sector, these are the figures of loans outstanding as of March. 2020. Now, if we look at the total outstandings of March 2020, is approximately 12 lakh crore on the industry, and we have only been closed after that. We haven't been really surviving. We haven't been really opening up, and uh, there's only a certain percentage that has uh, opened up. Most of the sector is not. General trade consists of nearly 5 lakh crore. MSMEs another 5 lakh crore. Transport operators one and a half lakh crore. Hotel and tourism uh, restaurant industry, which is still shut, is about 50,000 crore, which is totaling to 12 lakh crore. Now, this figure, if you say, is the current outstanding as of uh, February and March. After that, there have been a lot of stimuluses by the government, a lot of lending has been done. So this figure could have easily reached a 20 lakh crore. What is going to happen to this 20 lakh crore over a period of the next six months is a major concern. Imagine this figure where people are not paying interest, not paying EMIs, and they are under moratorium. And when the moratorium gets over, you have to start paying these funds. And that becomes a big problem because your economies are still not started. It is on back burner. It is just beginning to start. And the moment you are trying to start, uh, your installments and EMIs are going to hit. 
Now, what has been a uh, lockdown effect? Now, these are the figures that you can see is the effect on imports and exports. Now, in June 2020, we found that India's net exports were higher than the imports after many, many years. And when you look at the uh, year on year change, it has been a major dip. When you're looking at the last year's figure, you can clearly see the total uh, trade that has been happening uh, on imports and export. You can see the comparative figures. Uh, the red line is on the imports. The blue line is on Im exports. We find that the imports have fallen much more from a high and uh, the exports have fallen drastically, but they were never at a high. There was a lot of parity between the imports and exports. There was a lot of trade deficit uh, that we were facing as a country, which has become practically zero in the month of June. What is the meaning of the trade deficit being zero? It means that our imports have gone down. Majorly, uh, this is because of the oil uh, oil account. We are we were one of the largest importers, and it is the largest uh, value-wise uh, import. With that becoming nearly zero for a few days, uh, government buying a lot of fuel and ensuring that uh, the uh, the effect is passed down to us. It is seen that uh, there has been a lot of savings on foreign exchange. But what does that mean? We find that 35% of total trade is down. It shrank 10% in one year. So what, what does this mean? That means that this much of import and production has gone down. That means the buying has come down, but that much figure. That means your total mo money in the market has gone down by that much figure. So imagine $500 billion and uh, is your uh, imports and $300 billion is your exports. And there is a deficit of $150 billion. This being said, nearly your 40% down from those kind of figures. So imagine if your total trade imports and exports combined is about $800 billion and you're down by 40%. So $300 billion of money has gone out of the system within the country. So as a production powerhouse, as amount of money in trade in the system, amount of money deployed in circulation has gone down by 300 billion. So that is the actual impact of this lockdown that we have seen. And this figure has only become worse because A, we have uh, reduced our imports, but we have also reduced our exports. So the net figures are down drastically. Uh, the above figures that you can see are from the Ministry of Commerce as of March 2020. Now, uh, like they say, every cloud has a silver lining. So with every cloud having a silver lining, we find that even now there are a lot of sectors that have a, the silver lining attached to them. I will highlight uh, some of it here. Uh, you can have a look. Uh, I'm uh, sure that the screens are clear, but if it's not clear, I would like to read out uh, the figures that are on the screen. Now with this, uh, this pandemic, what has it caused? Is it caused major losses or is it an opportunity? Now we find that pandemic or no pandemic, COVID or no COVID, there have been always natural and unnatural calamities hitting mankind and humankind since the beginning of time. So this is just one of them. Earlier, it used to be localized with earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, financial crisis, uh, maybe the Lehman Brothers. So similar situations we have seen in the past. But we also saw that because of these things, there have been a lot of opportunities in various sectors. Now we find that there is a lot of, uh, there is a, a growth of sales and growth of profits have not been happening. Sales have been going down, profits have been going down. So it's a major loss for most of the companies. We find that in the last one year, uh, everything has gone down by nearly 30%. Uh, you have lost 30% of sales, you have lost 30% of profits in most of the sectors. I'm not saying all the sectors. But when you compare within the year, the first half of the year was very good. The financial year, the last financial year. And the second half was either neutral or substantially negative. 
so when you see the average of the last financial year you will find that it's maybe neutral or even showing slight growth so this has caused the false perception that we were not so much affected by the pandemic when you look at the average we are still in the positive A large company is still reporting profits and uh, it's all hunky dory we are not so much affected but when you say the nifty 50 and the stock wise and the performance of the sectors in the last quarter we find that there have been huge revenue absolute revenue losses as compared to the potential quarterly revenue that they would have had whether when the pandemic would have not have been there so these are not actual losses but notional losses with and without pandemic so automobile sector 17000 crore metal and mining nearly 17000 crore cement industry 10000 crore with infrastructure going down with the product, uh, construction sector going down with the houses construction going down the power sector 4000 crore it another 2000 crore and the banks another 2000 odd crore so we find that this total is a substantial figure when you say with pandemic and without pandemic in the nifty 50 sector wise impact or potential impact this loss itself would have uh, touched a figure of uh, about say 50000 crore which has been the notional loss which have would have been covered whether when the pandemic would have not been there now coming to the opportunity side well the biggest opportunity people are scared of china because of the pandemic it has been an issue there is a grudge against china because of the pandemic that oh it started from there not contained properly various issues uh, with various governments so what is the next best alternative for the global buying companies for the global brands who have been traditionally buying from china would look at opportunities india is the next possible opportunity with language no bar english predominant and manufacturing going up uh, manufacturing industry going up so this is the sector where india would highlight and shine now we find that global buyers of textiles, homewares, lifestyle goods, tiles, products, interiors, they are now looking for Indian products. Consumption globally has gone down, but India's share of global economy is hardly 0.3%. And the next big is China with 10%. So even if we say that 50% of the product buying is gone down globally, if China's share was from average 10% gone down to 5% and we are at 0.3%, we still have as a country a chance for exponential growth in this time of crisis. Our manufacturing, if taken by the proper route, can go from 0.3% of the world share to at least 3% of the global share of business. So this is a huge opportunity. In value terms, it is literally exponential. Now, buying requirements are already moving into India since the last one month or so. People are planning for the next year. People are planning for the next season, winter coming up. They are expecting a harsh winter. So when you say uh, shoes, footwear, uh, garments, these are the items that people have been not buying or holding on to buying for the last six months. But with utilizing of all existing resources, uh, these items are mostly lying around or outdated or overused uh, being at home. So this is going to be one of the largest purchases that we see in the coming uh, time. So India has an opportunity when it comes to textiles, when it comes to homeware, lifestyle goods. Uh, people would be utilizing more of dishwashers with servants not uh, being so easily available. People will be using a lot of washing machines. The white goods will be hugely in demand. And this is an opportunity. Leather footwear companies in India have been dependent on the components coming from China. For example, when you say shoe, uh, although the shoe is made in India, the leather is from in India, but let's say buckle, sole, quite a bit of it was coming from China. So this manufacturing will start within the country. The manufacturing uh, will also look at alternate supplies from Malaysia, from Thailand, from Vietnam, where all these can be alternately sourced. So there are going to be definitely constraint of supply chain, uh, which is going to have uh, disruption. 
uh, we, as we can see, the Vietnam and Cambodia will uh, replace China in quite a few items. Uh, the, what is the biggest constraint, constraint today for India's growth story to boom? We find that there is limited production capacity. Uh, our assets in manufacturing are outdated. When you see in the last five years in Maharashtra alone, or uh, what the kind of new manufacturing setups that have come up is practically zero. In fact, there has been a lot of shift of industry from one state to the other, where they have scaled down operations uh, due to increasing costs in the past. Uh, they have had to scale down operations because increasing uh, land prices, a lot of manufacturing industry has sold their properties for uh, a lucrative land value that they were getting to construction industry, for example. So overall manufacturing capacity has actually come down in India in the recent past. This will not be possible to overnight increase it and set up a factory overnight and say that, okay, we are ready for the world and let's do this. And uh, we are the next China in the making. We are the boom, uh, booming economy, but we need to ensure that our manufacturing capacities and manufacturing setup goes up. So this is one of the largest restraints that we need to look at ourselves and ensure that if we manufacture, we can definitely sell. Now, what is the effect on exports? Exports of India, India has been traditionally uh, exporting when you see the bouquet of countries. Our major trading partner has been the Middle East, the US and the European Union. When US and European combined, it is nearly one third of the total uh, this thing of your exports. And we find that the other countries, which is South America and uh, countries like Brazil and uh, or African uh, countries, these are the things that uh, have been making up the bouquet for the Indian exports uh, bouquet. Now, India's 9% of export is to China. What does that mean? That means that we need to increase that share, which is, it is the largest populated country in the world today. India is only second. So imagine when you say India is the largest market, that also means that China is a large market. We need to ensure that we pro push our products into China so that China buys Indian products. Now, why would China buy Indian products? Well, we are very good at a lot of things. With the manufacturing boom happening in China in the last few decades, we find that the number of millionaires and HNI clients is huge. It is a sizable population as compared to 1% of India, it's maybe 11 or 12% in China. And when you say that figure in terms of the largest population in the world, it's a huge market. So India needs to utilize this opportunity to export to China and ensure that our finished products go there and not raw materials. Today, what is happening is our 9% of the products, mostly it is going is your raw materials with China value adds sells to the world and to their own market. So we need to ensure that we do the value addition ourselves, we do the production ourselves, and we ensure that we take this market from China and ensure that we give a quality product to the Chinese people and we get their dollars for ourselves. We have another 3% uh, each on our neighbors, which is your Singapore, Bangladesh, Nepal, who are buying uh, this thing. Now, these countries like uh, Malaysia, Vietnam, Nepal, Bangladesh, Singapore, they are also large importers from China. These are also countries that have been affected by the pandemic. So what, what does this mean? That means that our share in their imports, which is less than 5%, as compared to China, which has been more than 20%, we can replace the Chinese products in these countries. So if we have a focused approach for increasing our exports, to these countries, which are in the near vicinity, not very far away, our immediate neighbors, this will give a substantial boost to India's exports. Exports have been declining to EU and US in the recent uh, years uh, because of alternate reasons, but we find that this is something that can be overcome today and we have an opportunity that we should not miss. Once the bus is gone, it's going to be a difficult time to get this opportunity for India's exports all over again. Now, the, the, uh, the reason why uh, most of the slides we are comparing with China is because uh, the 
threat perception that people are having from China. The pandemic is started from China and that was uh, the first reason. So that is how it has been coming. And that is how uh, people have been associating with the pandemic. That is the reason we are uh, comparing some slides with China. Now, when you say India's imports from China, what we need to diversify is electrical machinery. Like 34% of electrical machinery comes from China into India. These can be got from Taiwan. Well, we'll be surprised. Nuclear reactor and machinery. 18% of India's imports is from China for nuclear reactors and machinery. Now, of course, the government of India is one of the largest importers of this kind of products. And as a conscious decision in the recent past, they've decided to look at alternate supplies for that. But we would really request that this 18% of India's import can be brought down to zero and look at other options. Organic chemicals. Organic chemicals have been coming from China. And uh, these are also... 10%. So when you look at electrical machinery, nuclear machinery and organic chemicals, so it is 60% of your import bouquet, which you have today a lot of opportunity to diversify these products. Yes, pricing is definitely a concern. But when you look at the next best option, maybe Taiwan or Vietnam or Cambodia, we find that the prices are not much higher than more than 5%. And this is some kind of a figure that an Indian uh, economy can absorb. So this is something that uh, really needs to have and India's imports uh, uh, can be reduced, exports can be increased and it is a very easy game changer in today's times. Uh, as we just spoke already, uh, India's imports uh, uh, that we have seen, uh, imports are majorly 18% from China of, of our total bouquet. Now, surprisingly, you know, there was a perception that uh, India's largest import partner is China. Now, we find that this figure is not true. Now, DGFT, which is the Director General of Foreign Trade and Crystal have released this data, which says that India's largest trading partner is the Middle East. 84% share of imports coming from the Middle East. Now, this is something that we really need to increase. Uh, Dubai being the near close partner for India in most of the products, there have been a lot of imports happening via Dubai to India and China only accounts for 18% of India's imports. Now we find that EU is the second at 16%. So if 16% is EU and China is 18%, this 18% from China, which we are importing can easily be diversified to other countries. We find that the other country bouquet is 20%. Which, which leaves out the Middle East, China, European Union, USA, Korea. So if we leave out all of these countries and blocks, still the imports from other countries is a substantial 20%. Major of it being uh, from Africa, from oceanic countries, and especially these uh, coal and raw materials and uh, minerals that have been coming in. So this is a bouquet which is of 20%, which uh, is very easy to diversify, and which we have been doing it in the past, and it can be easily affected. Now, India's exports to China, like we already saw in the previous slide, is highest of gem and jewelry, which is 36%. This also means that there are a lot of HNI clients that value Indian jewelry, Indian gold, and Indian products that are manufactured out of these precious metals and the kind of value these people are ready to pay. Then you have minerals and ores, which is 15%. This is a figure that we would like to bring down to practically less than 2% and ensure that the value addition happens within the country. And then we go on uh, to other items. Then we have organic chemicals, minerals and ores and seafood. Seafood we are supplying 5% uh, of our uh, India's exports is uh, to China. We have electrical machinery, we have cotton, which is 4%, plastics, 3%. Uh, again, uh, we have iron and steel, we have salt. We are supplying 2% of India's exports to China is salt. Can you imagine? So if you really want to do something about it, cut out the salt supply and we will have another pandemic on our hands. So this is the trade measures that can be utilized and that are having an effect on our imports and exports when it comes to COVID-19. Now we find that uh, this is the traditional consumption pattern that has been happening since the last uh, decade or so. When the situation was normal, 
and when uh, we were spending now, it has been seen that uh, you can see the figures in uh, yellow are from 14 15 to 16 17 and the figures in blue are 11 12 to 12 13 so we are having this data from 2011 to 2018 and we do not find that there is much difference like the spending pattern of indian families has been similar and we uh, say for example 2011 to 2018 we have seen a lot of things a lot of ups and downs we had change of government we had change of your uh, taxation structures we had change of uh, we had demonetization we had gst but we find the patterns have been very much similar in fact even during the covid uh, pandemic we find that the pattern is still very similar what has happened food and beverages account for nearly 35 percent of any family spending which has been same throughout the pandemic you have been spending on your food and beverages as you would have always been doing and there is practically no change in fact that has gone up by a two or three percentage points transport and communication yes transport costs have come down but communication costs have gone up so your spending on your netflix or amazon prime or on your data have gone up but your travel has come down so you find the net effect of this particular transport and communication sector spending to be nearly stagnant the next comes your clothing and footwear uh, you have been spending roughly 15 to 20 percent of your expenses on your uh, apparel and footwear and which we have seen that the moment lockdown started opening uh, that is one of the first thing people wore because people uh, have been using a lot of night suits and home home clothes and home footwear they have had to uh, buy these things again so 10 to 15 percent has been your buying even during the pandemic health and education your uh, health costs have in fact gone up slightly education costs have steadied uh, and remained the same there's no change in the cost of education there's no, not much uh, uh, happening on the health front in fact health costs have gone up so you're basically from seven to eight percent you have increased your spending on health and education by about uh, three or four percentage points and that has gone up to about ten percent so when we talk about the ratios you know housing and maintenance for example during the rains people repair their houses that has been traditionally happening even this year during pandemic people ensure that they're protected from the rains the repairs have been happening there's absolutely no change yes but renovations have either stopped or completely reduced so the amount of cost of spending on your housing and maintenance has come down slightly down from about seven percent to about five percent in the last one year so this is something that uh, we need to highlight this has been the traditional consumption pattern and we find that during the pandemic also it has been just a few percentage points plus and minus and if we average it out over the last decade it is still very similar now what are people doing what are people doing in this pandemic now we have a survey which is done by content square and uh, they analyze these sessions and uh, your behavior online what has been happening they tie up with people and we uh, they analyzed on the data available now coronavirus and covid 19 impact on the online traffic sector wise now the largest growth was in the supermarket online supermarkets 161 percent growth of online supermarkets you were not going out to buy foods and vegetables and fruits and your food you were getting it online you were getting it home especially in the large populated cities media your online content it has been going growth is 80 uh, percent you're stuck on your forms let it be for uh, education let it be for your uh, content let it be for uh, movies uh, for serials for whatsapp 80 percent growth your cost has gone up telecom you're not going out you're not talking to people physically when you're meeting so you're calling people you're sitting at home you're following up uh, the industries are doing follow-up calls uh, the customers are being called that uh, you're in increasing and interacting with a lot of people you find that the telecom costs and telecom traffic has increased 32 percent tech retail or tech marketplaces like your online devices and peripherals because of work from home scenarios 50 15 percent increase 
bank and insurance costs the cost of insurance uh, we find that uh, covid insurance or the other insurances people have started increase buying at least especially for their employees uh, for their staff uh, large corporations are buying uh, covid insurance so there's a 3% increase in online traffic when it comes to the tech industry and the retail industry banking industry and insurance industry your banking has gone online if we find that the banking has uh, moved a lot from your physical visit to the bank to your uh, uh, tech devices so that has also seen an increase in online traffic now what has been the most affected now, what has been the most affected events entertainment events you used to go for your uh, uh, clubbing partying weddings and uh, all the industries or segments related to this having websites or online traffic is down by 57% tourism down by 57% uh, purchases of jewelry and watches online where you used to buy all these things you used to browse these items and luxury retail has gone down by average of 35% so these are the sectors when you say online traffic this is where it shows your behavior online where you are going where you are not going which is the most affected these are the sectors that are one of the largest affected ones then sports equipment it's not so much down because initially although everything was closed but more emphasis was later given to children uh, to play to go out to nearby places even if alone so we found lot of sporting equipment uh, coming up but still it was down by 15% retail healthcare uh, down by 18% cosmetics you don't need cosmetics anymore as much as you used to much before you only need to sit in front of your uh, uh, devices now and ensure so cosmetics online uh, sales are down by 20% home furnishings do it yourself like ikea which is selling online down by about 20% fashion buying fashion visiting fashion websites uh, with uh, less and less people going out no parties happening no weddings happening no functions happening so that itself has gone down by about 27% so this is the online uh, traffic analysis by industry and sector wise so this is what this change this is what we are doing right now we are going more of online supermarkets watching more content online utilizing our phones no longer uh, visiting uh, websites like uh, clear trip and make my trip because we are not traveling anymore no events happening we are not surfing uh, book my show no cinemas so these are the changes that have been happened now what is our spending pattern what actually has happened you know what what have we been doing in the past and what has changed with covid what made the difference now uh, access capital uh, did a study on uh, deferred consumption deferred consumption means what happens is uh, if you are not doing something right now you're going to be doing it maybe one month uh, later and you know entire india when you see that the percentage of gdp on your spending has gone down entire india has gone down by say about 42% which is a substantial figure now when you see only the cities the urban areas the down by 20% and the top 10 cities of india is down by about 8% or so so you are you have deferred in the ma major cities you have deferred only 8% age of your purchases in the uh, urban areas you have deferred about 20% of your purchases which have been classified as uh, say not essential and throughout the india nearly 50% have decided not to buy anything right now and maybe after a month or two we will see if we really need it we are going to buy so that is how your spending pattern has changed your people are now conserving people are now utilizing uh, their resources much more efficiently now uh, this data is a little old when it comes to percentage of uh, india's gdp with uh, covid-19 cases although maharashtra is one of the most hit uh, we have up karnataka gujarat rajasthan telangana uh, delhi delhi is now at much higher it is uh, at par with maharashtra so when you say delhi and mumbai are the financial and the political capital of the country and these two cities being majorly affected means that you will not be able to ensure that your consumption patterns and spending patterns are back to normal very soon a major substantial population of your entire trading community of the country is in these areas and this is where you have to ensure that you revive these two cities with the fastest possible 
uh, scenario and you ensure that these two cities come back on track to ensure that your economy is back on track then personal consumption expenditure like we saw in the previous screen that was for an average family but what uh, are you doing right now i mean you're spending on food which is the major expense then your miscellaneous expenses maybe online buying or you are uh, taking care of uh, health care issues these are the things that have increased your spending 30 percent is fruit uh, your beverages have gone down to two percent clothing is down six percent your housing water electricity gas bills are up to 15 percent furnishings are down to two percent health has increased from two to five percent transport is currently 16 percent uh, your communication cost has gone up. Recreation cost has become nearly zero. Education costs are still the same at nearly 5%. Restaurants are still at 2% uh, as compared to your earlier figure of 10%. The 2% is also there because you're operating these restaurants as uh, kitchens and home deliveries are allowed. And very recently they have been opened up for 33% uh, space also. So it is still at 2% uh, expenditure is coming uh, your uh, way of these restaurants food security now we find that the country uh, has just shown we saw increased labor available all these uh, farms uh, you had uh, trebled your uh, sowing uh, there was direct benefit transfer to farmers registered labor increase we have become much more self-reliant and self-sufficient in food and uh, APMCs and Mondays saw uh, decentralization. Farmers can go and sell directly. Sanitizations have been regularly done. So the food security has actually increased. Kharif sowing was done much better as compared to before. Uh, there were a lot of loans available to farmers. DBT was given to farmers in their accounts. So they have been surviving very well. India's food security has increased uh, drastically in this pandemic. Manufacturing. What happened to manufacturing? Well, supply chains were disrupted. Uh, automations will happen. More and more automations. Uh, now, the manufacturing, I will say, will be divided into two parts. What does that mean? A, in the cities where there has been migrant population which has gone to the rural areas and in the rural areas which has got a lot of uh, trained manpower coming from the cities. So what will happen? In the cities, you will go in for more and more automation, which will require less and less labor and will stick to the high precision and high value products. Mass market products and mass market uh, uh, factories will shift to the rural areas of states like Bihar, uh, Orissa, Uttar Pradesh, where they have all these trained labors which are readily available, which have moved from the cities and you will require these fresh manufacturing setups coming up all over the countries, the modern ones in the uh, urban areas and in the rural areas for labor intensive jobs. Services, well, services are depending on other industries as we all know, uh, if manufacturing goes up, uh, services will also go up. Our maximum employment generation is today coming from the service industries, your IT industries, and it directly affects the electronic and hardware industries, the software industries, the commercial real estate. Now, what has happened? Work from home has happened. So what does that mean? Well, real estates are being vacated. People where thousands of employees used to work are being vacated. But consumption of electronics and hardware is going up. With work from home, every employee is given a device. Uh, production and uh, uh, sales of these products are going up. So it's a balanced situation when it comes to vacating of real estate, shifting to work from home with work from home extended till December. Now uh, we find that uh, the employment generation will be slightly affected. There will be layoffs. There will be uh, certain uh, losses of jobs. But that being said, these employees are skilled employees. They have been in the IT and service sectors since a lot of months, years, decades. They are fully trained. So we will find that these employees, these people will come up with startups. A lot of people will start their own services, become self-employed, and they will ensure that all this goes a long way and they utilize their resources for themselves. IT sector, we just spoke 
uh, well, uh, we find that the client woes are there. The companies have been canceling projects. Uh, the clients have got, a, for example, uh, an IT company services, the manufacturing industry. With the manufacturing industry being hit, uh, we find that uh, their uh, costs are going up. Sales are coming down, so that will definitely impact the IT sector when it comes to revenues. The revenues we find from the last few days coming in the papers, revenues are actually going down, especially in the first half of 2020. We saw uh, TCL, uh, TCS, HCL, Infosys, they saw uh, slowdown in their growth trajectories and they are uh, plagued with uh, no more growth projects. Uh, they need to diversify. They need to go to different markets and ensure that this goes a long way. MSME companies, we find that MSME companies are backbone of the country. Today, they are uh, out of action. They are out of bound. 30% uh, is the contribution to India's DG GDP for the MSME sector. And uh, this is the sector that needs to be revived the fastest and with the maximum support. So this has, uh, sector has suffered the most brunt of COVID-19 in the last six months. What can you do? Well, utilize data. Data is available. Use prediction models. Use testing qualities. Using, using forecasts. Be prepared. You, uh, these are the 10 uses of the statistics that you have. You know, you have the data with you. You, have, you know what you've been doing in the past year. You know what you've been doing in the past decade. Look at the trends. Uh, look at the financial aspects, study your consumer, work on insurance, work on the political side, what funds are available, what grants are available, use predicting models, uh, utilize uh, a, a, a bouquet of services for your business and ensure that you utilize all your data. Statistics, like I said, uh, there are more than 6,000 products uh, that are made by MSMEs. Uh, there's a huge employment opportunity. MSME companies employ 106 million people, which is 40% of India's workforce. And it is next only to the agriculture sector. So this is what happened. You know, when I said when the factories shut down, they moved on to agriculture. So your 40% workforce came down to 30%. And agriculture went up from 40% to 50% resulting in higher sowing and reducing in production. So 95% uh, of the total industrial units in the country are MSMEs, which may be registered or unregistered. In terms of GDP contribution, it's about 6% of the manufacturing GDP and 25% of the service sector GDP of the country. We have uh, SME exports, 40% of India's total exports. So if MSME is hit, we saw earlier how exports were hit and how banking is going to be hit when lend comes down uh, to the SME sector, when the SME sector is in problems, your banking sector gets affected, your fixed assets get affected, your growth rate has been uh, affected for the entire country. And we find that uh, the SME growth rate has an average of about uh, you know 10% and they have maintained that. What has the government done? Well, we find that the government is doing a lot uh, to boost, uh, to support. You have the business immunity platform, uh, the MSME help desk that has been, uh, we have Invest India, we have SIDB, we have, funding, we have uh, mandated government buying up to 200 crore from MSMEs, the government marketplace for all procurements. And this is something that uh, we all need to cash on and ensure that the government is made aware that the citizens are requiring these services, are utilizing these services and ensure that it goes a long way. What are the setbacks? What has been happening in COVID-19? As you can see from these pictures, you know, these are pictures from a mall in Malaysia. With the malls being closed, you know, Malaysia has a weather very similar to our coastal countries. Leather footwear, leather bags, they're all fungus ridden. We find these uh, when the malls open, now the, they've been given permission uh, in uh, the uh, uh, unlocking that happened yesterday, malls have been given permission to open up. We will find a lot of stocks that are going to go completely waste. So this is something that we really need to look at and ensure that happens. Restart problem. We found the case of LG polymers. You know, they started production. People were not equipped. Uh, partial workforce. Uh, they ensured that they do the best possible things, but still accidents do happen. So SOPs need to be in place. So we need to ensure that all these things need to be taken care of. 
what next food security we are doing a much better job pumping up manufacturing is something that we really need to do we need to support the existing industries you, we need to ensure that there is new manufacturing to take care of global demand direct benefit to pan card holders that are linked to aadhar and bank accounts let citizens get the funds let citizens deploy these funds buy local support your inner circle support your surrounding renegotiate your deals i am sure your customers your suppliers your vendors are suffering similar problems as what you are speak to them they will be more than happy to support and find a way out key points what you can do manage your cash flows manage your hr take care of your employees speak to them talking solves a lot of problems utilize the government schemes for assistance and last but not the least ensure that you are a good leader lead by example set by example international trade boost we have uh, asean that we can utilize we can go through all these countries that are in our near vicinity to ensure that our exports and imports get diversified utilize the free trade agreements and new markets you know india has a free trade agreement with a lot of countries utilize that ensure that you get the information from all these sectors and uh, mitigate the impact of covid 19 by utilizing this ensuring that your product is cheaper than the other countries by utilizing these free trade agreements and access to new markets uh this is a recovery curve actually uh, nothing being said about it more than that other than that uh, india is on the recovery side india brazil china is one of the countries that are recovering faster as compared to the rest of the world well as i always say self help is the best help give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day teach a man to fish and he'll eat for life develop skills increase the skill sets utilize the skills let the education system become more robust let the education big system become more robust in helping the skills and employability of the people who are studying looking at the future well to be very honest don't be a hero love to fight another day don't say that you are superman or shaktiman and nothing can happen covid cannot affect you you never know try to be safe try to stay home as much as possible try to work from home as much as possible you have to take care of yourself and your family don't look at what your neighbor is doing look at your position look at your future so i repeat once again don't try to be hero always live to fight another day thank you so much for giving me a patient hearing and it's been my pleasure to talk to all of you and give you my highlights on how the covid has impacted domestic trade international trade on the overall trade and uh, commerce aspects of the covid 19 thank you so much i am handing over back to you and uh, it's been a pleasure and uh, i hope you find the session interesting thank you so much thank you sir thank you for your wonderful sharing participants are asked to raise your hands if there is any doubt you have kindly raise your hands and ask to our resource person if there is any doubt kindly raise your hands any questions i'll be happy to answer we have two hands from attendees one is uh, sir one question asked by one person sir yes please 
I purchased a car last August, and I am paying for paying from this installment. I have been provided moratorium for three months. Is accepting the same advisable, or there any drawbacks is going for more interest? If you really ask me, if you have the funds. and if you are having your income in days and if you are getting your monthly uh, things on time and you can manage the emis i would say do not take the moratorium because it is going to hit you in the long run you might be ending up paying much more interest you might be adding these emis in the end resulting in a total outgo of cost which will affect you if you are having substantial funds and your incomes are steady i would request you not to go for the moratorium but yes if you have a shortage of funds shortage of capital uh, you have other priorities then definitely utilize the moratorium any other questions i guess no more questions gabriel acha someone is asking for the last slide one second i'll just share again this one the contact details yes yes okay okay sir can i ask you one question yeah sure please go ahead yes uh, sir actually you know we we could see so many changes you know happening and when it, you are you are telling about now it's going to be a digital era but you know when it comes to you know uh, for example if you take me i am an assistant professor uh, from jain college but when it comes to digitally we are not that strong enough okay it can be technologically wise but we need to improvise and all those stuffs are coming uh, is it that now whatever the education policy has come in okay now mm -hmm. the you new education policy is it right. going to really help our country you know help the people help the uh, kids or the students at least you know the new policy which has come in you know the covid do you think really this system is going to bring in some changes to our country do you think really this policy will help us i really wanted to know see if you really ask me i've just gone through the policy briefly i've received it yesterday and i've gone through uh, first of all this policy has been in the making since about 4 to 5 years and okay. in the last one year uh, about a year back they had called a uh, lot of changes and suggestions they implemented it partially there was backlash they rolled it back and now finally they have rolled it out again with all these changes so it is the policy is not due to just covid but it has an overall change for the betterment of the country what is a major change if you really ask me is for the pre primary and primary students and the education system the more focus is on local languages i think this is a very welcome change that what happens in that age you know uh, when you say the entire country's population not just the cities uh, the rural areas especially there is a lack of teachers and okay. skilled teachers so what mm -hmm. happens is if you really ask for example in a small village in bihar or up a teacher to teach english at a level that we, uh, uh, a student is learning in a city like bombay in a private school it is not practical but it was happening you had english medium schools which were teaching and the teachers were not skilled up to the mark so you had two options a either to skill those teachers which is happening simultaneously anyways but it also ensured when you see localized languages and localized content see knowledge given in any form is knowledge so it doesn't matter whether you are studying it in uh, marathi or gujarati or in hindi or in sanskrit as long as the knowledge is being imparted so that is a very welcome uh, uh, step that the government has done is to localize the content and the language and said that okay you know for the first few years you can have either a local language or your mother tongue uh, in which the child can understand very easily so that is a welcome change then system if you say uh, what they have changed you know the i think uh, 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 i don't exactly know what, uh, the things i don't remember mm -hmm. but the advantage of this kind of a system will be in case 
somebody drops out from education for example they finished eighth standard they drop out they can get that certificate at an eighth standard they will uh, now what happens is you get a 10th or a 12th so if you're dropping out in the ninth you don't have anything in your hand that to say that you are educated or qualified or if yeah, you drop, yeah. drop out of 11th you don't have yes. anything to say that okay you know i am uh, uh, done this certificate course even professional yes. courses like for example engineering you know, you drop out of the first year, you drop out of the second year due to various reasons. Maybe you're yes. not able to cope with education. You have family emergencies or business wise. Now the yes. system will ensure that even if you have done the first year, it will be qualified mm. as a certificate course of engineering. Mm. For example, you do the second two years, uh, you are a diploma holder, you do three year, you are a degree holder. You, you have something in your hand to say and, that you're not a dropout, but you're a qualified personnel. Mm. This changes your mentality also. A student today says that, oh, I'm a dropout from first year engineering or first year medical. They yeah. will say that now we are, you know, we are qualified up to so-and-so level. So that changes your mindset. That makes you a positive person. That helps mm. you grow in life uh, and you value your education rather than say that, oh, you know, if you really ask somebody who has dropped out of education, he will never tell you that he's a dropout. He'll say that, oh, I had done up to this much. <laughs> now he will proudly say that, oh, I completed a certificate course in a Bachelor of Engineering. That means he dropped out of the first year or the second year, but that he is proudly saying that he's done that one year. Mm. So that is a welcome change. There are a lot of other details I haven't gone through. The, through yeah, all yeah, things, yeah. But uh, it's a welcome change, I would say. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Most welcome. Most welcome. If anyone, anyone is having doubts, kindly raise your hands.